Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. It is Monday. You know what that means. It's market outlook time. We're going to take a look at the market this week and all the content that we can see inside of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team during this first Team 1 of the Rule Breakers promo. Yes, this is week one of our first real promo, Rule Breakers. No screen this year. They swapped it up. They mixed it up. We are going to see some Ultimate Scream related content though later this week. We'll talk about that in this video. And it's also, again, a Champions League and Europa League week. There's going to be midweek games, possible content, and there's actually some stuff that I'm not scared about, but I'm looking forward to and it could cause some market movements related to this week so we're going to talk about what market movements you might see talk about the prices of these rule breaker cards what i expect with those and as well as maybe anticipating the second rule breakers team coming out on friday because i do believe yes this one is in packs until october 30th which is this upcoming friday at the end of the week we'll see a second team most likely come into packs and again the reason why i'm saying most likely is because this graphic right here displayed on EA Sports' website says Rule Breakers Team Number 1. And it seems to be, again, the way they're doing promos this year is a set of 11 cards for Team 1 and then another set of 11 for Team 2. And I honestly think they're just going to go with these sides of 11 each week. So there's only going to be 11 special cards and patch packs each week until maybe we get into like Team of the Season or stuff like that. Maybe, I don't know what they'll do for Team of the Year if they'll change that up. But... At least for like a typical promo, this looks to be what we're going to be getting used to this year. So again, the stuff that we're kind of worried about, though, is we already know what's going on with Rule Breakers. We've already had two SBCs so far. Uh, we had Malong and we have had um, Inaki Williams, which was really cool that uh, the two choices for Inaki with the two different types of boosts card, that was really cool. But this is what I wanted to mention. Halloween and Day of the Dead will also return to foot with SBCs and objectives. Featuring kits, stadium items, and pack rewards beginning on Thursday, October 29th. So rewards day this week, we are going to have some possible pack supply SBCs or stadium items and themed kits. So that's kind of all the content that we'll see for the um, Halloween and Scream, I guess, type time frame of this week. Uh, so, you know, of course, let's just go, go into, without further ado, what's going to happen maybe today on Monday, right? We'll take it day by day throughout the week this week. We kind of jumped ahead to Thursday on that, but let's start with Monday, right? So squad battle rewards were just a couple hours ago, and I've actually had a couple cards sell. There's a nice little rise up from the market right after rewards. I got this Diego Carlos at 24,000 coins. Looks like I got a lazy sale at 30k. This was a posi position change why all them to striker that I got at 67, sold at 75, and a lot of these cards, if we go actually back over to Footbin, some of the most popular players on Footbin, we were sitting on stream and buying some of these cards because we knew that they were going to bounce back up. Uh, let's go to Footbin again, and it looks like a lot of these cards have rebounded. Joe Gomez is like 93k, Sun was in the 170s, Allen is, was up about 3,000 coins, Marshall's up almost about 10,000 coins, Rashford's up 10k, uh, Lucas is up about 5k. Wijnaldum is up a decent amount. He was like 66k. That was a really good one. Bale was 28. He's now 32. Valverde was under 30. He's 34. Pug was in the 180s. He's now 200. So a lot of these cards, we saw this last week as well. And that's why on stream, I was telling everybody like, Hey, if you want to get in on some meta players, Premier League, especially good links, good nations, of course, meta players, that a lot of people are using those types of cards are probably going to rise up tonight. Now Davies actually, I think... Either I'm remembering Davies at his wrong price. I think he was like 32K maybe before rewards just for a hot second. Or he was at least close to 32K. Yeah, 30. No, nah, he was about 35. So he's not up that much. But some of these cards are rebounding very nicely. Tellez uh, is about the same price still. Langley is up, I believe. Some of the low rated cards did get hit with some supply. So they didn't move much. I got a Dybala at 44. He's up. I got a bunch of Fabinho's at 21. He is up. Uh, I got a bunch of Dominson Sanchez at 22 to 23K as well. He's up to 26. So that is a nice rise. I would expect these rises to continue as we get another sale coming in hot on the Allen St. Maxman at 40K. Yo, I bought that St. Max at 34, 35. Is he already back up to 40? That's crazy. Honestly, what it is, boys, is so many people know that um, cards go up on uh, rewards nights. I don't know how I sold that St. Maxman basically when I relisted, but... Uh, a lot of people are just are known, they, they, they buy cards on squad battle rewards nights. They either invest for the market rise um, or they're just buying their teams because that's when they're told it's the lowest time to buy, which yes, it is a pretty good time to buy, but 
Um, a lot of times, at least the past couple of weeks in this market this year, we haven't actually seen things continue to go up after Monday. So what I'm treating all my stuff as is I'm gonna take a quick flip on a lot of these cards and cash them out today on Monday take the coins before we head to into Tuesday with Champions League content. And that is one of the days and one of the things that is slightly scaring me about this week ahead. So again, it is a Champions League week. And on Tuesday, I would be very, very surprised if we did not see any Champions League content. I bet we will see again UCL marquee matchups. We get those basically every match day for the Champions League. So again, if we look at match day two, we got some interesting matchups this week. Um, now, I don't know who they would pick from the Tuesday matchup. Maybe they would do like Mönchengladbach, Real Madrid, or Man City, Marseille, possibly. Maybe Atlanta, Ajax. That's kind of a, a bit of a tough pick for UCL marquee matchups. Um, and then Wednesday, Barcelona, Juventus, or Man U, Leipzig, I feel like might have to get in uh, as the um, showcased matches in UCL marquee matchups. So that would be pack supply, probably tradable that we would be seeing this week on the market that's something to look out for and one thing that nobody's been talking about in the past couple days is these packs right here ucl two player pack ucl three player pack two common ucl rare pl uh, player packs and a 81 plus ucl rare player pack now if these sbcs came onto the game i believe the 81 plus ucl rare player pack last year cost you like an 82 rated squad or something it was very overpriced and not worth it but people will panic sell cards for these packs, all right? If they come out onto the game, not as like SBC pack rewards, but as repeatable SBCs, people will do these. I'm telling you right now, with the way the market has looked this year as well, it could get a little bit ugly on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, if these do come out. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying that this didn't come out last week when they were first put into the code on Wednesday. And I'm wondering if they're going to come out this week during the Rule Breakers promo. So... Just kind of something to keep in the back of your mind. I do expect UCL marquee matchups before these games, but I would not be surprised if we got some variation of these, maybe these packs, maybe repeatable. We'll see. Maybe they'll just, they'll just show up as part of the uh, marquee matchups uh, rewards. But other than that, I have a little bit of, I guess, I think there could be a bit of a sell-off on Tuesday or Wednesday if we get either of that content and if we do see some of that stuff come out on those days. So how could, how could that affect the rest of the market? or these rule breaker cards, right? After awards tonight, these guys have been dropping down. Douglas Costa just keeps going. He's one of the most meta cards out of this bunch. He was 490K early on Sunday. At the content drop, he was 430, went back up to 470, and is now back down to 430 again after rewards. Will you see some of the stuff rise up into Monday, Tuesday? I think it's possible. If we don't get any good SBCs or anything that would kind of cause maybe sort of panic, today on Monday, I do think you might see these guys rise up a little bit because there's still weekend league games left, right? We are still in the middle of a weekend league uh, that is extended. A lot of people have games left. I myself actually have 20 games left. I'm on seven wins. I got 20 games left to play. So I'm gonna have to grind a little bit to get to my gold three uh, tonight a little bit and then on Monday and later in the day as well. So there's still a little bit of demand for foot champions, but also there's just new cards in the game. Now, obviously, if people are doing anything this week, they're not playing rivals because they played foot champs and all their rivals games are used up. A lot of people are going to be in this live foot friendly rule breakers classic game mode getting this Mukiele card. I think there's going to be a lot of desire for people to get this card. And that's where people will be spending their time playing games early in the week. So keep that in mind. You know, it's probably going to get a little sweaty, even though it's called live foot friendlies. I, I've heard it's a bit sweaty already. Just kind of keep that in mind. But that's kind of like the gameplay objectives that we have to do right now because, of course, with the rival situation that needs to change very badly, there's just not a lot to do in the midweek. So, again, we are just kind of, since there's no games, there's not a lot of demand for people to buy their teams. What we're seeing is just a lot of potential for panic selling in the middle of the week just because of um, this stuff that there's no there's nothing to do really on the game so again if you bought any inform cards from this week's team of the week let's talk about those for a second right now team of the week four we've got guys like rashford timo Werner. um i didn't really recommend rashford as a buy tonight to most people because i do think there's going to be some point this week where he does go lower he is up a bit right now he's almost back to 600 k's in the 590s um he was in the 570s today a little bit um before squad battle rewards came out timo Werner is somebody who's very interesting with his supply um he's right now about three hundred twenty thousand coins 318 
he, that first day that Team of the Week came out last Wednesday, it seemed like there was just crazy, crazy amounts of supply on this Team of the Week. Uh, but, you know, the prices have stayed decently steady. One guy that's really dropped off tonight on Sunday is Thomas Delaney. And a lot of people bought this card. It's easy to tell that. He was about... 55, 56,000 coins before squad battle rewards. Now he's up to 62, 63K. This is a really popular investment, kind of like those gold cards that I talked about rising into the, the, day, day, the day today. I think a lot of people invested in this Delaney as well, and that's kind of pushing up the market. So even for a Team of the Week 4 card, I would probably hold off for now. And these Rule Breaker cards to me are just still very, very expensive. I think Harry Kane right now is around 1.3, even below that actually. Yeah, so now we've got some supply on Harry Kane's. These cards seem super duper hard to pack, which is probably why they're overpriced. And they're like the first set of real promo cards this year in the game. They have some really interesting stat upgrades, which is why I think you're seeing the prices stay this high. Um, but I still think these cards drop at some point later on this week. They've only been in packs for a weekend. All it takes is some pack supply SBCs, a really good uh, player SBC, or some upgrades. SBC is coming out for Champions League, and I do think you'll see some of these cards drop. I just feel like they're too expensive right now. I know they're rare. I get that. But some of these guys are just way too pricey, in my opinion, for the stat upgrades that they had. Unless this Harry Kane guy is very good in game, I don't understand why he is even remotely close to a million coins. I feel like he should have been like 700k at the very most. Now, a guy like this Douglas Costa is a bit interesting because Brazilian links five-star skills. They boosted his finishing, which has always been a problem for this card. And now he has 85 finishing with that pace, with the Brazilian links, the five-star skills. This guy is probably going to be very, very OP. And he's just going to kind of reach a point. You know, he's going to, I'm not going to compare this to like a center back Kyle Walker card, but there's a lot of hype for that card. There's also a lot of hype for Dries Mertens, who has been dropping off a lot. He's 520k at the moment. A lot of these cards are dropping off after squad battle rewards again, but if there's no content on Monday, you might see some of them bounce back up, and I still think they drop throughout the rest of this week. Uh, weekend League rewards is going to be a really critical time for these cards on the market. It's probably going to drop all their prices, and then just like we see with Team of the Week cards on Thursdays, they'll probably take an initial drop and then rise back up before that, but I would expect some panic selling on Wednesday from wherever the prices go later this week. I would expect some panic selling on basically all of these cards on Wednesday before rewards because people will know that, hey, these are going to be impacts. They're going to want to try to take the cash and you probably will see a downturn on these cards at least before rewards on Thursday um, and on that time frame Wednesday night headed into Thursday. So that's something interesting to watch out for. Uh, and then, of course, just with weekend league rewards coming around again, that's more cards that are getting input on the market. It's more supply. So we might continue to see some of these lower rated items. Uh, that are still maintaining a decent price, like a Vinicius is 4,000 coins still. Uh, some of these low-rated cards that are still usable, Fred is 14K. I, I still think of a guy like Adama or um, I think there's even Davies. I mean, I still think a lot of these guys have some more room to drop off. Davies, of course, has some hype this week with the links to the new Douglas Costa card. But Again, what we see every year is the low-rated cards, like the Sissoko, right? Or, you know, like the cards that we mentioned before. The low-rated cards are going to start to fall off because, yes, they're meta, but they just get packed so much, and, you know, they just get so much supply as we have promo packs, as we have pack supply SBCs, that those cards are really just going to start to tail off. So just be careful with those guys if you have them in your team and uh, just realize that, hey, maybe if you're buying a Sissoko right now, if you're going to use him for the next month, he might only be 10K the next time uh, you see him uh, if you check his price in a month. So just kind of realizing that, hey, some of these cards that you're going to buy right now for your team, if you plan on having an extended hold, are probably going to still drop down in price. Uh, but that's just kind of the name of the game early on. If you're okay with losing a few coins like that and you're trading on the side and you're, you're making investments and stuff, then that kind of stuff, you know what? You can kind of live with it, right? I bought a Joe Gomez for my team. I'm loving the card, right? I bought him for 105. I'm glad he bounced back a little bit. Um, but I also bought a Rodrigo for 12K. I bought a Bale for what? Like 40 or something like that. I bought this before he dropped down a bunch, 38K. And now he's 32K. So I realized that I'm losing some coins on Bale. But the, car the card's awesome, right? I'm a Spurs fan. I'm going to keep him in the squad. So just so that you realize that those things are going to start to happen, of course, this week. Uh, rewards is probably going to be very profitable again. One thing about rewards last week was so many people made so many coins last week that they're going to go all in this week. 
So rewards this week is gonna be a bit interesting because you're gonna have a lot more people investing. Whereas last week, I think some people didn't invest because they didn't think the market was gonna rise. So that actually helped the market go up even more because less people were investing and less people were selling against people that were actually trying to buy those cards up if that makes sense. So just kind of watch out for something like that this week as well. I think Thursday flipping will still work. I'm still going to be going after it. Midweek though, honestly, what I think I'm going to be doing is once I get these flips to sell, as you can see on my transfer targets, I've been watching the icons. Oh, I got a Lucas Mora on bid. No way, man. 46K. I will take that. What is he going for right now? Oh, he's over 50. Let's go. That's huge. I forgot a bit on that, but icons have been fantastic i flipped that um petite on my transfer list for about 23k profit earlier today these guys are really good to trade with on the weekends but i think they're going to be decent to trade with during the week as well because what else is really out there that's going to be having some sort of demand i know people aren't going to be playing as many games uh, but icons just fluctuate a lot the way it is 59th minute is going to be a great place to be this week or just fluctuation trading in forms or messing around with if there's any panic selling on uh, rule breaker cards. That's going to be the, a wave this week too. On some of the more meta rule breaker cards, if you see a, a pack supply SBC come out, like Laporte's 480, 470 right now for Laporte. If you see an SBC come out, this guy drops like a chunk, I mean like 10% in a first hour or two. I bet you can expect that card to rise back up that 10%. Uh, just because it's the new promo cards. Again, these prices are high because people want to use new new cards and use dynamic images and have cool colors in their team. So watch out for maybe some quick flips on these this week. Again, as we can see in this market, quick flips are just the name of the game. It's the safest way to go about things. It's the honestly the best return on your investment for a short-term flip is just quick flipping cards, either whether it's an overnight flip like we're doing right now from Sunday into Monday or you know later in the week with pack supply SBCs. They get supply, meta cards drop, you buy them, they rise back up because people buy them back or whatever. So that is kind of like the best way to trade, in my opinion, right now in this game. So icons are going to be great. Out of packs cards are always great for fluctuations. This Vardy literally goes from 178, 179, and he hits 190 on PlayStation like every single day. So if you can get an undercut at like 175 and maybe get a lazy sale like 193, like that's a solid flipping range that you can do almost every day with a card like this. Lozano fluctuates a lot too. He's down at like 92K, 91K. He was 115 earlier last week. So just watch out for some of that stuff this week on the market and be wary of panic, right? Again, we just don't have the demand for people to play games Monday to Wednesday. So honestly... After we have this rise on Monday, like what else is there to do gameplay wise except for the objective? So that's why we really need this rival structure change. Hopefully EA is working on that. Hopefully we are going to get some changes when it comes to that rival structure and all that stuff. So if you guys enjoyed the video today, that is the market outlook for this week. That's what I expect to happen. And also maybe some ways you can trade and make some coins as well. But thanks for watching, boys. Uh, drop your question down below if you have any. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nathan Foot Account. Catch you guys later. Peace out.